Jenny's father passed away a number of years ago. Her family still struggles with whether or not they made the right decisions during his final days. When he was in comatose stage, he could not make any decision at that time. And my brothers, both of them love him so much, but they have different opinion. If he were alive, I think he'd like to make a decision to tell the children what to do. Because of my father's you know, experience, I would like to, to prepare myself so that my family and also my husband, they can know what I want at the end of my life. I met with Bonnie uh, yesterday. Uh, she was a facilitator of the advanced care planning. She really gave me a very good introduction and explanation about what it's all about. I'm wondering if you've ever thought of a person to speak on your behalf if you suddenly became incapable of communicating your wishes to your doctors and nurses. I have not talked to them about uh, the process is pretty good. She asked me so many questions. When I came home and when I sit down and I look at the booklet and finally I know what I'm going to do and I'm going to do something for myself. <laughs> Having recently retired, David saw the value in making his own advanced care plan. Our whole population is aging, so being prepared and being ready for what comes is, is very natural for people. Advanced care planning really is a step before that because it's talking about the process of dying rather than death itself. And that's something that seemed right to do to me. And so you look at um, living more meaningfully once you face the question of what happens when I can't make those decisions or can't think for myself anymore. And every moment becomes thoughtful, if you like, when you live with that awareness. Harjeet, daughter Cam, and other family members moved to Canada from India in 1992. Six years later, Harjeet was diagnosed with kidney disease and began dialysis. When we asked him, who can talk for you, right, if when you can't speak, right, or, or there's, if someone make choice for you, he chose me. Since I'm most of the time with him, he believes that I can make decisions for him if he's really sick. And uh, he always tells me that if anything happens to me, you can speak for me. Okay, I'm going to take your blood pressure. He thinks I can maybe translate properly for him and understand his feelings. Well, my voice, it helps us a lot. I understand more about how he feels about his family, about me, about himself, what kind of decisions he wants, you know, when he can't say something. I usually don't hear that from him, like, you know, I, I love you all and, you know, take care of my wife and you guys should all help each other. I never heard that from him, honestly, before, and this was my first time we came to some kind of a solution or a conclusion, right, about his life. So at the end, he found it, yeah, it's worth it. Um, if I cannot communicate with you guys, right. maybe I have an accident, then, but you know what is your mom's wish. So this is a workbook that uh, she goes over with me. Then I call all my family members, you know, and around the dining table, I told them that I want to tell you guys that what I learned, and it is for your mom. And I want you to know what is my wish uh, at the last day when I cannot communicate with you, but you know what I want. Because I'm still healthy and young now, but you know, anything right. can happen. Mm -hmm. But when I'm getting old, maybe I'm having no d dementia. And then I, you I think it is very yeah. good. It is wonderful. I don't find it is really hard, but I find that I've never think about to sit down with my family member to talk to, 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 talk to them about my wish. So, it is something great.
Advanced Care Planning is a process to help you better understand and reflect on your goals and choices for health care at a time when you're no longer able to speak for yourself. To help you discuss these with your family and health care providers and to create a clear written document that communicates your wishes and plans. Dr. Doris Barwick, as a palliative care physician, recognized that individuals and families needed a plan to follow. The needs of patients around end-of-life planning really had not been addressed very well. That many patients and families uh, were facing health care decisions that they were not prepared for, that had never been discussed or anticipated in any way. The kind of crisis that that can represent uh, for patients and families when suddenly they're in the context of a, you know, a, a lot of things that are happening and they don't know what to do and how to make the decisions and how important it might have been to have been prepared or have prepared them for those decisions. I don't want to be a burden to my family or to, to those around me, nor an embarrassment. So at that point, I, I think it's my duty in some sense to take responsibility and to make the decisions now that I may not be able to make in the future. We're a culture in which we don't often discuss death and the decisions surrounding that. And I think to create a context in which we, we recognize that this is a normal part of life and begin to talk about it, I think is, is, would be helpful to um, to take it out of the medical context and really make it about people and families as they face these decisions. Time to come off, Bob. Three minutes left. Yeah, and you're looking good. Lee Bellifo works as a registered nurse in a dialysis unit. Patients come here to keep them alive, really. This is a life-limiting disease with no cure. But we're doing advanced care plans now with all of our patients. Patients and families often have unrealistic expectations. So if we talk about them, it prevents a lot of uh, issues, a lot of problems later on. All right, Lee, so all we need is a consent form to be signed okay. for dialysis. I've worked with three or four people already that have said to me they want maximum care no matter what and of course our program is about respecting choices so if that's what they want that's what we will honor maximum care the health care choices you make when you are capable may not be appropriate when you become very ill your doctor will consider your choices, but will only offer treatment determined to be of benefit. As a family physician, Dr. Dale Stogren has been proactive about discussing advanced care planning with his patients during regular physicals. The way I broach the subject is say, uh, you know, everything looks like it's in order. Let's look to the sort of future, and one of the issues that I think is timely to talk to you about while you're still, while your health is still good, is what would you want to do, or what would you want to happen if you get into a situation where either your your health suddenly crumbles, uh, you develop a serious illness, uh, you're struck with a stroke, and you can't sort of uh, make decisions for yourself, or at least you can't communicate those decisions, so that everybody's on the same page, that we don't get into um, a, a predicament in an immediate situation when they're sick scrambling around an emergency department trying to decide what we should do and what we shouldn't do. We're just going to take this, try taking this blood pressure now and see how that is today. The whole notion of talking about death and dying is much more relaxed now than it was in the past. It's a much more open discussion. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So that's very good. That off. Oh, yeah. Bye. If given the circumstances and your life has changed and you know the players in your life have changed, then we look at it in a totally different way. I can live. I'm gonna live. Live for, tomorrow. For another 10 years, see? Eh? Oh God, that'll be something. Right now, but it, I think really what we're looking at is when there's a, when um, you have an illness such as a cardiac illness, there's adjustments that you need to make. As a social worker who supports individuals and families within a hospital setting, Terry Brock knows the importance of advanced care planning. Today, he is speaking to a group of heart attack survivors. Care. I find it really important that people let their families know the kinds of medical interventions they want and what they don't want. Because you've been through the emergency experience, you've had things done to you, and 
you know, people have a right to decide what they want and what they don't want. One of the tools that we can use for that is an advanced care plan, okay? That can be done in a number of ways. You can have discussions with your doctor, discussions with your family, and a way to, um, you know, write down what your, what your interventions are. You know, if you've gone through... It doesn't have to be emotionally charged that you're, you know, you're going to die imminently, you know, or um, it's all about life and death. It's about what they choose to have. And people can choose to have everything done, which is perfectly appropriate, or they can make choices about things that they don't want. If people are clear about what they want, things can be much more expedient in that you're following what they want instead of waiting for a process to happen. So when you have something concrete where people have actually had the discussion, then you can make better informed decisions and, and do what people want. I have materials that I can send home with you to read. In order for an advanced care plan to be effective, one that can be respected and followed, the individual, family, and healthcare team must all have a common understanding. The, the emphasis needs to be on conversations and shared decision making, so that it's not the doctor independently or the family independently, but really creating a context in which you can, we can have conversations in which you really understand it's not just medical talk about lab values, but it's actually an understanding that you know what I know, that you then have time to go away and think about that and then come back and say, given what you've told me, I think this is what I'd like to do, now how do we translate that into a care plan that actually can be acted upon. So basically what you're trying to say is you don't want us to put you through any kind of life support in a critical, whenever you're in a critical condition of any sort. Right. N no, not at all. I, I hope that you know, with this kind of you know, planning and the process understand. that people can really understand it is good for the person and also it is good for the uh, health care system so that they can provide to give what is the best uh, to the person. Conversation, the act of talking directly and openly with family members and friends, is the single most important element of an advanced care plan. People have a lot of things that they do want to talk about and a lot of things that they've thought about. And so the opportunity to discuss them in a context that's respectful and that honors where they're coming from, it just kind of decreases the, um, you know, the, the, the potential for conflict between family members as they've had conversations and as people are able to say, this is what I want and this is, this is what I'd like to see happen from here. And basically it then um, it, it reduces that need and that burden for family members to try to guess at or anticipate what someone may have wanted. An advanced care plan is all about making important personal choices. One cl clear choice needs to be if, if I'm, for instance, in a situation where I can no longer speak for myself, who would I appoint to be that spokesperson? The spokesperson is supposed to represent what the patient choices were, represent the patient, not their own personal point of view. And you need to have conversations in which they can really know and understand what your wishes are. Um, I think literature has shown that if people don't have these conversations, that my ability to predict what your choices might be are only 50-50. This kind of conversation that sometimes takes place in the hospital room when death is happening could so much better be done in, in when you feel well, when you feel healthy. and So it doesn't have to be something strange and odd and remote from life, it can be integrated into life. Reverend Seamus Mackerel works in a local hospital as a spiritual care coordinator and believes in the open and inclusive nature of advanced care planning. It respects the person, uh, whoever they are, wherever they're coming from, it, whatever their tradi traditions or religious beliefs are, it respects them. The questions of spiritual care uh, are the same questions with advanced care planning. Uh, what gives meaning to my life? Uh, what is the governing the quality of my life? How do I make decisions in life? All these questions are spiritual care questions. They're the same questions in advanced care planning. So the two are very, very uh, close to one another and work together very easily. I think that's very important that we respect uh, their choice of being ministered to spiritually, their choice of ambience and environment uh, in the place where they're dying. And this spiritual 
uh, component to advanced care planning, I think really goes to the heart of respecting their choices. Even though your wishes can simply be verbal, a written and witnessed advanced care plan provides clear and convincing evidence of your choices and is legally recognized under common law. It will help others understand your wishes if there ever comes a time when you are incapable of communicating yourself. The tool that we use, the My Voice Workbook, it, it gives us a, a, a really good opportunity to explore all kinds of, uh, of things that affect a patient under medical treatment. Down there, I could key to if a person like reaches that stage where they, they are unable to communicate to, to us, the first thing we would do is look for that, is there an advanced care plan? And we'd look for the, the spokesperson, the decision maker that's been named in that uh, workbook and we contact that person. The advanced care plan document is something that allows the, the family to say, here it is, and to get that into the system to work and to have uh, its impact because you get a chance to say, what do I want? And when do I want it and how and in what circumstances? And facing that, you, you can do your best and express yourself and, and um, be a, your own person. The advanced care planning process recognizes the needs of diverse cultures and that individuals address issues around death and dying in a variety of ways. Some cultures it's really who makes the decisions that's different in different cultures. In Western culture, it tends to be more the individual. Our focus is on individual and the autonomy and the rights of, that we have to make decisions. And in other cultures, it's more in a familial context, or it made the decision making maybe deferred to an elder son or someone like that. You know, there's, there is a reluctance among many people to talk about death and to talk about what your wishes are. And I, I, I don't see that in one, you know, uh, characteristic in one culture necessarily. If I'm dying, then no, I do not want any, no, uh, anything to bring me back. So many Chinese seniors never touch this kind of topic, never mention to them about death or dying. But something that I do not have to scare them, but I just can ask them and let them mentally or voice out what's their wish, maybe what they want to do uh, at the last moment. I had Daniel, my, uh, my nurse, come down here. And the uh, variety of people that I've talked to from different cultures have also received uh, this concept of discussion as a good thing to do. I, in a way, I was actually uh, pleasantly surprised to know that, that they would be open. The emphasis for us is really about shared decision making, about respect for the different cultures that are represented within our health authority, for the different ways that people may want to have these conversations that may not be as much about respecting your individual choice, but about having conversations that include the complexity of the cultural, religious background that you come from. <laughs> 